<coughs> so just to talk a little bit about um, <coughs> uh, being of unconditional love and also what what do you do if you have fluctuating fluctuating uh, uh, fluctuating states of consciousness i.e. from fear to fear to love and <coughs> also if there is guilt associated with when one isn't always in a state of love and light and presence uh, one has guilt that one has uh, dropped down to a more fearful controlling state so <coughs> the thing with uh, with guilt is uh, guilt is not useful because guilt uh, the vibration of guilt is uh, uh, if you keep it at the level of uh, the vibration of guilt you you're basically your consciousness is resonating at I deserve punishment you see mm -hmm. so to 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 know that uh, guilt has no benefit because Within the collective unconscious of humanity, there is a feeling that guilt is useful. You know, the feeling that guilt is like um, uh, to self-flagellate is actually being a good, pious person. You see, you know, I was speaking with someone and they said, they said to them, "You sort of feel like if you punish yourself, then God won't punish you, or you need to punish yourself, so, you know, to show to appease God or something like that." So that's not actually, you know, um, uh, the, the, the infinite loving consciousness of God isn't really interested in you punishing yourself. And it's just a vibration which is not useful. So I, that's useful to know in case the ego thinks one is being spiritual by holding on to guilt, you see. Well, you know, I'm bad, so let me just hold on to guilt. It's a vibration which um, should be processed through or released. ASAP has zero benefit, um, and um, to the intention. Well, first of all, the intention for unconditional love. You know, it's uh, it's a very high. It's not the it's not the intention of enlightenment. You know, like Buddha would say, to release all attachments and to be in the infinite field. But the the next level down is the intention for unconditional love. To have unconditional love at all times. But of course. It's a very, very powerful commitment because uh, it will automatically pull up from the universe to state, I want to be unconditional loving, will automatically uh, create a very powerful field to bring to light every area uh, that your ego is holding where you could be unforgiving. So you can, be, you can expect uh, an interesting ride if you say to the universe, I'm going to be unconditional loving because you'll find bus drivers, pedestrians, employers, pe people tr it will automatically, because it's like you're asking for the purification of the ego. You're asking the universe for the purification of the ego. And if you really have a strong intention for unconditional love, then usually the universe will accelerate your progress by giving you all those, you know, cr your ego will, will attract t to, to it and it will be like this process will be sped up, so you may hold unforgiveness towards parents, unforgiveness towards yourself, unforgiveness around money, unforgive all of these things will come up. And you know, you know, like unconditional love would be, you could see it like a state, you know, it would be impersonal. So there would just be a pre the presence of love. As soon as there is, a, as soon as the ego makes an interpretation, like, uh, like uh, the, uh, the, bu the bus driver doesn't deserve unconditional love, you see, or whatever. That, and so it's, it's, it's an ego thing, so that has to be released. Or uh, one of the things to know, if you, especially if you're getting a fluctuating state, uh, one of the things I, I learned was unconditional surrender. You know, like when you do spiritual work, uh, if, if you're processing, uh, if, you, if your intention is unconditional love or enlightenment, one should have the attitude of unconditional surrender to life and life as it unfolds and to the experience in yourself as it unfolds. So, you know, uh, if, the, if it's, how it manifests for myself is that, is to just allow whatever happens and whatever happens is okay. 
like if I'm feeling uh, if I'm feeling tired, if there's an experience of tiredness, you know, if that's if that's witnessed, that's okay. It doesn't have to be changed. You see, it can just be silently observed or just allowed. You know, like I talk about, feel the feelings is to allow. So you don't push things away or wish they weren't here. You just allow everything to be without making any mental commentary. So that's one of the things. So you just let it let it be there. So let's say you're in a state of love and then suddenly there's a, f a state of fear. Yeah, so you fluctuate from love and then now you're in fear. Maybe guilt comes, oh, I should be in love. But that's like, that's a, that's a mental commentary. And the fastest way is not to, uh, not to comment on the experience or the witnessing of fear, but just let it be there and it will start to evaporate. So uh, it's only the ego that would say, well, you're bad now because you're not in a state of love. So you want to let that mental commentary. So feel the feelings not to label whatever is experienced in the now, to just allow it. So if you just allow anything and don't, make a, don't label it or comment on it, then it'll, the energy, you know, so that what it would mean would be there, within the ego there is still repressed feelings. So these feelings will start to evaporate. So you allow them just to be and, and they'll evaporate. Or you could do, let's say, so you know, I talk about the feel the feelings or the observer tools. So if you're doing the feel the feelings, say you're in a state of love and suddenly there's fear, then there might be a commentary, oh I'm bad now because I'm in fear. I should be in love all the time. But let that, that's also labeling. That's also thing. So you let that labels go and you just allow it to be there. If it's like guilt, oh, I have to like attend to somebody and um, I need to always be in a state of love and now I'm not. But you let that commentary go and just let, you let the uh, whatever emotion be there and then you just, you just, uh, just carry on with what you have to do. And just allowing the emotion. And that's the fastest way to release it, one of the fastest ways of doing the feel the feelings. You just carry on doing your, whatever needs to be done, you just allow the emotion to be there and carry on without labelling it. Because as soon as you label, you can say, well, oh, I feel bad because I've lost the state of love, or I'm bad because I'm helping someone uh, in a state of fear, you see. So you don't know. And then that, that emotion just because it's not being labelled, we just start to evaporate off, you see, you just laugh. And another thing with unconditional, the attitude of unconditional surrender is don't, have, don't allow the ego to time track it. Yeah. You see, if you unconditionally surrender, you know, like your ego may say, well, this, this is taking too long, or it may go on forever, you just don't label. Just surrender to however long it is, it is. So that, that's a really... It's a, it's, it's a thing, because one of the things that a lot of people suffer with is when they do spiritual work, is they have a thing of, I'm going to do it for a while, and I expect results. You know, this is really not good, not good. Because as soon as, like, you're, let's say you're in fear right now, and, you go, and you do, you're just going to sit and feel the feelings, or just practice being the observer of the fear, if you have a thought going on, well, I'm going to do this for 10 minutes, and it has to show, I have to have progress, the, you have to. I would let go of those ideas. You know, it's just like, even if you're going to do it for ten minutes and it hasn't shifted at all, be happy with that. You see, just be happy, just be happy with life unfolding because there's a process. So that's actually counterproductive to be putting expectations, outcomes, or time tracking. Like I need this. I need to. I need fifty percent of the fear to be gone in the next ten minutes, so I can be ready for work, or, or I can be ready to be. To meet my, to meet this person or to help this person, that you have to let that commentary go. So life is what it is. It's like <clears throat> if you let all your, <clears throat> otherwise you could have like things like, oh, it's sunny today, I'm happy. It's raining, and you get the thing. Well, I have to be unhappy now because it's not sunny. You see. So that will just do it. So you just allow. <clears throat> it's the thing of um, also. Uh, so I'm. Unconditional, to get to unconditional love, you, you're, you know, to commit to unconditional love, you're committing to releasing the blocks to unconditional love. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, but to release, an optimal way to unconditional love is not, is to, um, 
one is not labelling, one is not having outcomes and expectations of it. it. This is not a useful thing to say, I'm committed to unconditional love and now there's fear, uh, let me, I'm bad, uh, I want instantly to be in unconditional love. That's not necessarily useful because, you know, if, the, if you're committing to unconditional love and you're in a state of love and then suddenly fear comes, maybe that fear is arising so it can be processed through so that you can now go to the state of unconditional love. So if you, by letting it be there, I mean, you can do tools, you know, like uh, praying or whatever, which is also fine. But I think, you know, part of the ego is repressed emotions. Uh, so you just allowing them will go. Otherwise, you can do the observer. So one of the things with the fluctuating states is that, let's say, <clears throat> there's an experience of love and presence right now, and then there's a state of fear. And then there's unhappiness that the, now there's a state of fear when a moment ago there was a state of love. Well, anything that fluctuates you can do the observer on, you see. So something is identifying that love is self. Yeah, and something is identifying that fear. So there's a fluctuation. There, is, there has been a witnessing of a state of love and a state of fear. And there's frustration when the one is in fear. But that whole fluctuation has been observed. Yeah. Something observes being in states of love and being in states of fear, and that fluctuating through the day. So that which observes the fluctuating states of love and fear, ask what's observing the fluctuation. That's a practical exercise. So that which observes love and fear coming and going, the observer of that, when one is in the observer of that, is that observer uh, is that observer experiencing fluctuating states? You see, no, it's not. It's not. It's not uh, experiencing fluctuating states. So if you keep applying the observer to the dis the the uh, ex the dualistic experiencing of love and fear, love and fear throughout the day, if you that's that's a mystical experience because now you've gone. You know, a bit like Einstein, you have to go to the next level. You have to realize that something observes the fluctuating states. And once you identify as the observer of fluctuating states and you realize that's who you are, then you start to dissolve the frustration because you're now, you're now, you'll start to supersede. Because remember, if, if something is not identified with, it's not experienced. So, like, uh, if I, you know, if I, if I kept going to the observer of this pen, not that, I, I, maybe not the best example, but if I went to the observer of this pen, and then to the observer, and the observer was interested in the pen, but there was less attention going to the pen, it would start to get less important. And if I went to the observer of the observer, which had no interest, actually I would not notice that this pen is there, you see. So if you go to the observer of fluctuating states, you know, oh, I'm in a state of love, now I'm in a state of fear, now I'm in a state of love. So go to the observer of that which, which notices fluctuating states, and you recognize that that observer doesn't care about fluctuating states because it's observing them. So it's not, it hasn't got a relationship with the fluctuating states. So if you keep going to the observer of that, then that will disappear, the experiencing of fluctuating states, you see. And there, therefore you will collapse that dualistic perception through it. So, so one of the tools, don't label it, and don't have outcomes and expectations. Don't put a commentary, I'm bad, if I go into a negative state. Uh, <clears throat> also, for me, on a mystical level, um, uh, this is just my view of karma. I believe in karma. I, I agree with, with Buddha. Uh, like, you know, like um, uh, everyone who meets, you know, like, Everyone who meets me uh, at any time, they're meant to meet me. You see, if I go, if I suddenly become very like irritable and angry right now, on a certain level, you know, um, that was meant to be. And then what do I mean by that? I mean it's like the universe is already orchestrating everything in perfection. You know, so if I if I go on a bus and it goes on diversion and I'm late for my meeting. That didn't happen by accident, you see. So, you see, so there is a mystical, there is choice, but there is a mystical, 
there's a mystical alignment to the people because you know you could say if this world is for transcendence you know to transcend the world then um, everything that my ego gets identified with needs to come up for my thing because it means why did I get on a bus that went on diversion is because my ego still has problems with that scenario so that's why the universe wanted me to get on that scenario so I can transcend it because mm -hmm. I've identified with it you know or if I keep going into bad romantic relationships and the same characteristics keep coming up and I keep getting hooked on to those ident uh, identifications then that me meeting those re those relationships was not by accident, you see. So I could transcend it, you see. So every all those difficulties, um, you know, or if there's so if if, um, but equally everything that happens is also equally an opportunity for every everyone else. Like if I'm grumpy right now and angry, then and someone's affected by that, but I'm also there for their benefit as well, you see. Uh, in the sense that they have an opportunity for transcendence or forgiveness or, or, or letting go. If you, if you take the view which I do do, which this universe will continue to hook you in until you're unhookable. And so everything will come up, especially if you're doing spiritual work, everything will come up that can still hook you in, you see, until you... you, yeah. once, you once you transcend something, by the nature of the word transcendence, you've transcended it. You know, so it's like, um, yeah, so I've, I've done lots of videos with my mother. You have to transcend every single hook until there's nothing they can do or say that affects you. And then the miracle happens, you see. Or maybe if um, uh, I don't get affected by being put on a bus diversion, then probably the universe will think I've learned that lesson. But until I've, I've transcended it, it might keep putting me on buses which go on diversion, you see. So it's like, you know, you, know, you haven't... Mm. Can't fool the universe, you see, while well, you're still looking into something.